Hi, in this my opening video of a new playlist that I'm creating, My New York, you might expect to see video clips from places like Grand Central Station or perhaps the Liberty Tower at the World Trade Center or Times Square or maybe even this guy. I'm the naked cowboy. But no, I brought you here to Brooklyn and the shores of Gravesend Bay, where in 1776 events occurred right here in Brooklyn that determined the future of this country and the people in it. In 1775, colonial militias up in Massachusetts drove the British out of Boston. But the British didn't go back to England, no. They went to Canada, Nova Scotia to be precise, where they waited for reinforcements to arrive, and arrive they did. And in August of 1776, Lord Howe, in command of a vast British armada, landed here at Gravesend Bay and brought ashore 6,000 soldiers who marched up that way toward Brooklyn Heights with a very clear mission to engage and destroy the revolutionary army of George Washington who was trapped in Brooklyn Heights up against the East River. Now, the purpose for telling this story is not so much the historical story, which is interesting in and of itself, but plenty of people have done that. I'm bringing it up because of my personal relationship to Brooklyn and perhaps even people who were defending against that armada that just landed here in my hometown. And I'm going to go into that to convince you that I'm the perfect guy to tell New York stories. And that's precisely what I'm going to do over the next few weeks. I have a bunch of stories percolating in my mind about the city where I grew up and a place where I have a sense of ownership of. And that sense of ownership comes from not only being born here and growing up, but having family that has been here in Brooklyn for at least five generations, maybe more. So from here, the British and their contingent of Hessian mercenaries marched north toward Manhattan to engage George Washington and the Revolutionary Army. It's a cloudy, hazy day today in New York, not uncommon in the middle of the summer. So it's a little bit difficult to see the skyline in the distance, but on a clear day, it's one of the most magnificent views of Lower Manhattan from anywhere in the region. I'm standing on Battle Hill, where revolutionary militia under the command of General Sullivan took a stand against the British who were coming up from Gravesend Bay. And on this very place, they held the British back long enough for Washington to escape across the East River in the dark of night with a convenient fog, Washington was able to take his entire army on boats across the East River, and he was able to survive and fight another day, which is a phrase that I believe came from George Washington. Live to fight another day, and that's what they did, but that was only uh, possible because of the brave stand that was made by the boys here on Battle Hill, which is now part of Greenwood Cemetery casualties of that fight. They were vastly outnumbered and outgunned, and they took a beating. The British lost 60 men. The Revolutionary forces lost about 300. Some of them fell right here, and they weren't even buried by the British. Like I said, the British were pissed. Locals, local residents came and buried the bodies somewhere in this area in a place where the wind had blown a gigantic tree down and made a hole for them. And that was the beginning of Greenwood Cemetery, which is such an historic place here in New York. But again, my mission here today is to connect some dots as to why 
I'm the guy to make stories about New York, and there are just so so many stories right here in this cemetery that 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 I will make the origin of those stories as I take you around town and show you different uh, different parts of New York that you won't find in in local tour guides. The midsummer haze makes it nearly impossible to see the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor that I have my camera pointing at from my perch here on Battle Hill. But Lady Liberty, the Statue of Liberty, a gift from France in the 19th century that came to New York Harbor, was placed on her pedestal facing Battle Hill in tribute to the men who gave their lives here to defend Washington's retreat, allowing the United States to eventually become a real thing. Had Washington been defeated here, that would have been the end of it. So Lady Liberty is facing Battle Hill. And I never knew that growing up here in New York until I visited here with my friend Marty, here being Greenwood Cemetery. And that's the positioning of the Statue of Liberty, is to face this cemetery in tribute to the men who died here defending liberty. In the mid-19th century, in the 1800s, an Irish immigrant named Charles Higgins, who was buried in this mausoleum in Greenwood Cemetery, came to New York and made a fortune with the Higgins India Inc. Company. He became an American citizen, an American patriot, and started investigating the history of the revolutionary battle that took place here on Battle Hill. And he was appalled at the lack of historical acknowledgement of this gallant battle. So again, you can't see her now because I'm in a different perspective, but Lady Liberty's out that way in the harbor facing Battle Hill, and Charles Higgins erected this monument, Statue of Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and patriotism, to wave back to liberty. And that's exactly what she does here. Standing here on Battle Hill, Minerva waves to her sister, Liberty, out in the harbor. In November of 1949, a young boy was born in Brooklyn in a nearby hospital and was brought home after a few days to this house, 149 Huntington Street. That young boy was me. My great, great grandfather, John McCarthy, purchased this house in 1887 when it was new. And I lived here up until I was six years old. This region of Brooklyn is now known as Carroll Gardens or something like that. The real estate people keep changing the names of places to promote the properties. But back when I was a kid, this is called Red Hook, and this is where I grew up. So I'm certain that my Brooklyn roots date back to the 1887 purchase of 149 Huntington Street when my great-great-grandfather, John McCarthy, purchased the building. We also have a family folklore that I have forebears that were living in Brooklyn back in revolutionary days. I haven't confirmed that yet, but if it's true, it's quite possible that my Irish forebears were part of the regiment under the command of General Sullivan that held off the invading British. Well, I guess they weren't invading. They were actually trying to come back here. But they were held off by a regiment of soldiers where there were a lot of Irish guys, like me. Yeah, so when it comes to stories about New York City, I'm your guy. I've had six or maybe more generations of my family living right here in Brooklyn for many, many years. So I am going to be telling you stories about Brooklyn at first, but I will get across the river to the city 
that's what we locals used to call Manhattan. Probably still do. It's not Manhattan. It's the city. And when I do get across the river to the city, I may include things like stories about Grand Central Station or the Freedom Tower at the World Trade Center or Times Square. But I'm not going to do the cowboy guy. He's from Ohio. <laughs> so, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There's a bunch of stories coming.